Hi, hello, and welcome to my brand new vlog, Wow, the Word of Wisdom Ministry. I'm your host, Frank Costin, and I'll be bringing nuggets to you from the Word of God. And tonight, I just want to get into something. It'll be brief, so please bear with me. I won't be long, but it'll be really brief. And I just want to share uh, something. I hear this scripture all the time, and I hear people misquote this certain scripture that I hear. And the scripture, uh, the way it's misquoted, people often say, all things work for the good. And although that sounds great and it sounds nice, it's not entirely true. So what I did is I put together a little something that I want to share. And I want to read the scripture to you the way it's supposed to go. It's actually Romans 8 and 28. The scripture says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So I want to share with you a small little thing just to encourage you. I want to talk to you about the word together. So when I looked up the word together, two things jumped off the page at me. And those two things were the word simultaneously and also uh, the other word was jointly. Uh, simultaneously and jointly. That means the word together means that there's something in conjunction or uh, simultaneously happening at the same time as another thing. So we look at the state of the world today. Uh, we have the coronavirus that everybody is uh, either locked in the house or some people have even at this point, giving up and they're back out to their normal lives. But the coronavirus is here and, and then we have unrest in the streets and it seems like things are bad. And I hear a lot of people saying how bad things are. But listen, the Bible says that all things work together for the good. So now knowing that all things work together, that means that no matter how bad times look, God is still good and God is still working on our behalf. Listen, this thing did not catch God by surprise. God knew the coronavirus would be here. God knew that there would be unrest. God knew all these things before they happened. He is not surprised by these things and God is working in our favor. All we have to do is stay the course. We have to change our paradigm. We have to see the glass half full and stop seeing it half empty. We need to stop focusing on the negative and focus on the positive. And the positive is that God is good. God is merciful. God is great. God is for us. God is here. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And he's going to bring us through these times. Now, if I can take your attention to yet another passage of scripture, I won't read the whole thing, but... Uh, the parable of the, the wheat and the tear is in Matthew's, the 13th chapter, and the parables from the 24th to the 30th verse. And I'll, I'll give you a, a synopsis of, of this uh, parable. So there was a, a, a farmer, uh, I guess you can call him a farmer because he's out planting in the field, and he planted some wheat. And he planted the wheat, listen, on good ground. So the wheat is a good product. It's a good thing to do, but it's also that he planted it in good ground. And when he planted the wheat, while he slept, an enemy came and planted tares, or we could say some kind of weed that he planted along with the wheat. So when the, 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 the products begin to grow, when the wheat began to grow, the Bible said that the tear grew first. And now we find the, the servants of this farmer, they come to him and they, and they ask him about this. And he says, some enemy done this thing to him. But then they ask him, shall, shall we go and shall we pull up the tears? Shall we go pull the wheat, the weeds, pardon me? Shall we pull the weeds? But then... He comes back and he says something profound to them. He tells them, let them grow together. Let them grow simultaneously. Let them grow jointly. 
Let them grow together. And then when it's time for the reapers to come, he'll have the reapers go ahead and pull the tares out first, bundle them up and burn them. But then we have that good old wheat left to harvest. You see, even though there was a bad thing that the enemy thought that he had, he thought he had some tares that were going to come in and destroy this crop. But all the while, the ground was still good. And everything that was taking place, goodness was still being birthed. And at the end, although there was bad and good at the same time, good still prevailed at the end. I know I'm being very vanilla with that explanation, but... I really want to get across to you that this is a season of joy. This is a season of, of, of triumph. This is not a season for us to run and be thinking that we live in a world of chaos and, and then there's no hope. This is a time of joy. This is a season of victory. God has us. All right. And let's wrap this up because I told you I won't be long. I want you to think about what the Apostle Paul said in, in Romans, the seventh chapter and the 21st uh, verse. He said, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. So what is Paul telling us here? Paul is telling us quite simply that no matter how much good there is in this world, there's always going to be evil. There's always going to be bad. No matter how much positive, there's always going to be negative. All right? So in order to defeat an enemy, listen, I did 20 years in the military. And in order for you to defeat an enemy, the first thing is you have to know who your enemy is. So the fact that we know that evil is present, we know evil is present, but we also know that goodness is present as well then we can focus on the goodness and destroy the evil. The evil does not have to have victory in our lives. The evil does not have to win in our lives. We can overcome because we serve a good God. All right, and I'm going to wrap it up and talk to you about one last person. I want to talk to you about Job. See, Job was an upright man, a good man. And the devil went before God and the devil is just walking around and God asked him, what are you doing? What are you here for? And then he, he asked him, have, have you considered my servant Job? And then, then listen, it sounds crazy, but God knows what he has invested in Job. And God gave him permission. See, listen, God gave him permission which means that the devil has no claim to you, no rights to you. He can't put his hands on you without first getting permission. And that's reason to shout right there. Because if God gives the devil permission to touch you, then that means that God has already invested in you what it takes to overcome. Now you just have to reach inside that bag and pull out what God put in and win the battle. That's reason to shout right there. So here we find that God has given the devil permission to touch Job's life, but he couldn't take his life. So everything that looked bad, it looked like Job, he lost his kids. That's, that's bad. I couldn't imagine. He, he, he lost his wealth. He, he, lost, he lost his, li his livestock. He lost everything. But he held on to God because even in that violent storm in Job's life, even his health was bad, even during that violent storm, God was working a work in the background. And when God worked a work in the background, the Bible declares that Job in the end was given everything that the enemy stole from him plus some. Because anytime some bad or negativity or evil is working, God is still working. And listen, God is greater than your situation. God is greater than your problem. God is greater than the coronavirus. God is greater than civil unrest. God is greater. And God will get 
the victory. Depends on which side of the fence you stand on, whether you are celebrating that victory with them. Because God is going to be victorious. His people will be victorious with them. Listen, that's my time. I just want to thank you for tuning in tonight. I just want to say to you, God bless you. Um, I want to say a quick prayer for, for you all. And before I go into the prayer, um, I just want to send a shout out to uh, Pastor Myron Jones of the Apostolic Christian Temple over in uh, Washington, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's a dear friend of mine. And listen, y'all, uh, I had the, the, the page up and I had everything going and and. He was pushing me to get this vlog going, and, and I was dragging my feet on getting the vlog going, but he pushed me and pushed me, and I've got it going. And I also want to pray for my brother, because it just happens that this morning his father passed. So let's go into prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that is watching and, and hearing the sound of my voice today, God, I want to pray a blessing over them. I want to pray, God, that you would keep them. God, even in these uncertain times, that you would keep them. For God, we know that you are good. God, your name is great. And God, we know that you love us above all things, God. We are your children. So, Father, I pray peace right now in our world, peace in our nation. God, I pray right now that you would comfort us. Your word says that you won't leave us comfortless, God. And I pray, God, that you would come and that you would comfort us in this time, God. And Father, I pray, God, that you would come quickly and show us your mighty hand in all these negative situations that are going on. They have to bow to your name. And we thank you for that precious name of Jesus right now, that all power is in your hands. We thank you right now. God, every tongue is going to confess your name. Even every knee is going to bow. They're going to have to confess you because your name is great and greatly to be praised. And Father, before I close in my prayer, I want to ask that you would touch the Jones family. Touch my brother Myron Jones right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, I speak peace right now in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, this has been my time. I just want to tell you I love you. Be looking out. I've got more coming for you. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like and share the page and uh, there'll be more to follow. God bless.